probably have a better idea about this than just about anybody we talk to because you talk to so many CEOs. What do you think about whether we're facing a recession here in the United States? Yeah, so actually I agree with the CEOs you had on camera. We, um, we've had a lot of conversation with our clients, CEOs, CFOs, and, and really the, the United States economy is doing very well. It still continues to do well, consumer driven. Um, you know, obviously geopolitical events are slowing some things down, but, but there's a lot of confidence and there's a lot of capital. Uh, you know, companies are looking to see what they need to do for the future. A lot of this is around technology. Uh, a lot of it's around M&A activity. Our capital confidence barometer, which we survey thousands of our clients around the world, 60% still say today that they're going to do a, a, an M&A transaction in the next 12 months. How come we haven't seen more in terms of capital expenditures then? Because that's been surprising. We thought there would be a lot more unleashed by the tax cuts. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there will continue to be more. Uh, I do think, look, what's going on in the world is certainly causing some uncertainty and, and you know, but. For our business, for example, everything we're doing, sometimes when, you, when a recession's coming, you start hearing, well, that project's on hold. We're going to put things on hold. We are not hearing that. Uh, there's a lot of transformation going on, a lot driven by technology, and that continues. How, how far in advance would you start to hear things like that? Is that an indicator six months ahead of time, 12 about, months? I would say about six months. So Somewhere. you haven't heard any of those issues to no, date. No, no. When you talk about things that are happening around the globe, potentially slowing things down, you're talking about the trade war? trade war, uh, Brexit, uh, there's just a lot of uncertainty around the world, but, but trade war is probably number one. Um, uncertainty around the world, also a slowdown around the globe. We, we may be feeling pretty good here in the United States. What do you see happening globally, and do you worry that gets imported? So when we, when we look at, for example, Asia PAC, except for the trade war and Hong Kong, China, and so forth, um, Things are moving. I mean, our, our business in Asia Pac is growing 14, 15 percent. Really? In consulting, absolutely. Uh, a lot of a lot going on in transactions. A lot going on with technology. A lot going on in terms of companies really getting themselves ready for the future. Why? Why do you think you hear from from CEOs and CFOs that when it comes to capital, they do have plans, but it's for M and A instead of maybe capital expansion? Well, I think I think when it comes to right now, look, there's pressure for everyone to grow and. You either grow inorganically or organically. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to grow organically, you have to have a real plan and you have to invest in technology. So, you know, I think most CFOs and CEOs would say that they're looking to invest in technology. Look at right now, most companies go into the cloud. You know, it's a big business for us. You know, we're in partnerships with people like Microsoft and so forth in terms of getting companies to the cloud. We're going to be 80% of our business going forward is going to be in the cloud. Uh, we do audits around the world, our audit tool, Canvas that's being migrated to the cloud. Now you might say, does that make it more efficient and so forth? It certainly makes it more efficient, but it also enables us to, to do innovation around that technology, to put AI into things and so forth. And other companies are exactly the same way. What will you do with the AI? What, what, what kind of data processing do you need? What, what, what will you learn from it? Yeah, for us, for us, what we're doing with AI even today is we're really supplementing what our, what our people do. And what we want to do is really take a lot of the lower level work um, outside, you know, and have it being done by technology and not by people. What that, do you mean lower level, like data entry type of stuff? Or? Data entry, checking things and so forth, reading things. For example, we're using AI right now to look at lease contracts, you know. So when we, when we audit something, we do projects and so forth, a lease contract is this big. And many large companies have hundreds, thousands of them. We're using AI to read through the document um, <laughs> to look at particular parameters and, and, and that will tell you how to account for a lease, a capital lease or an operating lease by certain parameters in the lease. So we're, we're And AI using, is good at that right now? It can read yeah, through that document yes, and pick it all that, out? Yes, yes. That, that is one example that we're working on that's working right now. So, so Carmine, how much do you really see, you touched on it before, how much do you really see as a percentage of clients that you speak with that are starting to look around China? that are starting to actually question you and say, okay, look, we want other alternatives? So that's a great question. Uh, that is happening. Companies are looking around China today, uh, and they have been looking at it even before all this started. It's, it's practi practical risk management. You know, they're looking at supply chains. There's no doubt supply chains have been moving out of China. Vietnam is what everyone talks about. But um, 
if you really look at it and you're looking at long-term and long-term risk for a company, you, you can't have all your supply chain in China. And, and, and you know, it took this maybe to spur companies to look at that, but they're doing it. Absolutely seeing it. it. What's the new, what's the next Vietnam? If Vietnam's the next China and everybody's trying to get there, we hear about how difficult it can be to be there because the first movers uh, have already filled up a lot of the factories. So what's next? Well, I think a lot of Southeast Asia, there's still, there's still room in Southeast Asia, Philippines, there's places like that. There's Eastern Europe. Um, we're doing a lot in Eastern Europe. In Poland, for example, it's got great labor, uh, very smart people that are, uh, that are, that are really good. So there are pockets in the world, maybe Latin America, um, where, where more of this can be done. In, in terms of the tariffs, very immediately, we are looking at tariffs potentially being put on more goods and higher tariffs starting in two days. Um, what will that mean? What, what have your clients kind of laid out as contingency plans? Yeah, so, I mean, our clients are, um, look, they all want this to go away, obviously. Um, but uh, they do have plans. Supply chains is one piece of it. Um, they are looking in terms of, you know, their consumer, what they need to sell to. Um, but the short, term, the short term reaction, you know, they're not as concerned about. They are concerned about long term. Carmine, this is kind of a weird question, but you say moving, moving, looking down the road, you're going to be 80 percent in the cloud in terms of your own business at EY. Yeah. Um, how much are you in the cloud right now? What, is it 60 Pro percent? No, no, probably 30, 40 percent. OK, so this ramp up that we've seen in cloud is only with a lot of companies still having a relatively small portion of their business in the cloud. You expect that ramp up to continue for quite some time to come? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's why, you know, the cloud providers and, you know, there's the big three, but but there are others that are kind of coming in. I mean, I, you know, that's going to just continue. It's, it's really where everyone needs to go. And I know there's concerns, you know, you get the question around security mm -hmm. uh, and security around the cloud. But, you know, technologies that are being built today, cloud technologies, are actually much more secure than old technologies yeah. where you had to build a fence around the technology and so forth. When we talk to clients about security and cybersecurity right now, one of the biggest conversations we have is an attack from within. Um, because that's really the right now from one of the employee, bigger dangers from an employee, from a vendor, from someone who has, you know, who's inside your parameters today, and so that's something that a lot of companies are worried about. A lot of companies are working on, and this gets into training employees. This gets into, you know, making sure you're looking at your employees, who they are, and so forth. 